Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of the Daily Bullet. I'm Paul Lathrop, your host. Joining me today is my absolute pleasure to bring in a good friend of mine and a great guy, Charlie Cook of Riding Shotgun with Charlie. Charlie, thanks for joining us today, man. Thanks for having me, Paul. This is a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to this. Very cool. Well, let's let's start. You've got we're going to talk most of the time about riding shotgun with Charlie, but I think the way most people have been introduced to Charlie Cook is with Charlie's gun grams. And those things have been viewed about a kabillion times. How did you get the idea to shoot a gun as a percussion instrument while accompanying, by the way, in your non-dominant hand with a trumpet? That that's a great question. So I've I've been a band teacher for probably twenty five years, and I I would learn to play the trumpet with my left hand so I could come over and play drum parts uh, for the drum section because I, I work with elementary students or I would conduct with my right hand and I would um, change you know move things around point to where music is with kids. So I've been playing the trumpet with my left hand for I don't know twenty years maybe for quite a while. So it wasn't wasn't that big of a wasn't that big of a transfer or, or anything challenging or difficult. After I became uh, a gun guy and became a gun instructor, I was talking with one of my friends and he said, "You know, it'd be really funny." He says, "Every time you talk about playing in a band, you know, you get that that light in your eyes and you brighten up." And he said, "You should find a way to put your gun stuff together with playing music." And he said, "It it would be really funny if you did the Blue Danube Waltz and you played bum 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 bum." <laughs> And, and I thought that was ridiculous, just like everyone else did. So I went home. I learned the Blue Danube. I figured out, you know, the, you know, I live in Massachusetts in occupied territory. Right. So I figured out how many magazines I have and how many, you know, I have a couple of um, pre-94 high cap mags and a couple, some 10-rounders. So I'm like, how, how many shots is it going to take for me? When do I have to change the mag and all this sort of stuff? And I did take an, an advanced pistol handling class with Rob Pincus a bunch of years ago. So... We worked on the one-handed reloading. So I went home and I worked on this and figured out when I could change. And, and I think it was in the summer of 2014 I went and um, played the Blue Daniel Waltz. And, and I, I, you can find it on YouTube if you look for um, Trumpet Glock Duet. And that was the first one that I did. Then in 2015, it was uh, one of my friend's son's birthdays. And I, as a parent and as a musician... I hate it when kids sing cha-cha-cha at the end of every line of happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. So I figured what I would do is I would do um, play happy birthday with one hand and shoot the cha-cha-cha with an AR-15. And I put that on my YouTube channel and I put it on my social media. And then I had people asking me, they're like, hey, my birthday's coming up. Can you do a song for me? Can you do this for me? And then it turns into movie themes and TV themes and you know, patriotic tunes and stuff, and it just kind of took off from there. And I'm going to say, in a, in um, in the first four or five months, I ended up on a uh, on a TV show called Right Right This Minute, which is just these people that sit around and talk about viral videos. And then I got phone calls from some radio stations in in Texas and in Florida, and they're like, "Hey, we saw these, and you know, we want to have you on our morning show." And that was pretty cool. And um, from there, it just it just kind of kept spiraling. And I ended up doing uh, Gun Graham for Lee Michaels, who's uh, a radio host in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. And he used, to, uh, he used to substitute for Mark Walters on Armed American Radio. And he says, hey, listen, I want to have you on Armed American Radio and talk about the Gun Grams. And I'm like, let's do it, man. That would be really cool. Very, very cool. And then the rest is history, so they say. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> so... The other thing you do, and I want to spend most of our time together talking about this, you do something called Riding Shotgun with Charlie, and you have had some amazing people jump on the stagecoach with you. Uh, how did that get started? How did, you, how did you come up with the idea of Riding Shotgun with Charlie? All right, so I have, um, I've been a Toastmaster for about seven years, and I did this manual called Communicating on Video. And I had to be on a show, you know, do a five to seven interview, five to seven minute interview as a guest, as a host, and there were a couple of other projects I had to do. So that's when I kind of kind of came from that. 
and I was sitting with um, sitting with some of my Toastmasters at a meeting one night, and I said, you know what? I've watched this carpool karaoke show, and this chubby guy who's English gets to hang out with all these rock stars. And me being a musician, you know, I've always wanted to be a rock star, but chubby boys that play the trombone don't get to be rock stars. So I, uh, I said, hey, I drive a lot. If I noticed my son would open up to me a little bit more if we're riding in the car and he doesn't have to look at me to talk to me. So I said, how can I do this with gun stuff? And I said, I'm going to start a show and I'm going to call it Writing Shotgun. And I found out writingshotgun.com was taken or someone had the domain name for it. So my mentor says I should incorporate myself into all of my stuff. So I said, great, I'm calling it Writing Shotgun with Charlie. And that wasn't taken. And I, I thought I could just interview some of my local friends, some of the musicians I played with, some of my, my gun instructor buddies here in Massachusetts. And then I connected with Lee Michaels. And Lee says, hey, if you come out this particular, um, I asked him, uh, so Lee was robbed at gunpoint, and his story ended up in a book by Mark Walters and Rob Pincus called Lessons from Unarmed America. So I was uh, friends with Lee, and I said, hey, I want to come out to Minneapolis and have you on my show. I'm doing this new thing, riding shotgun. And he said, if you come out at the end of August to the Minneapolis State Fair, you can, uh, or sorry, the Minnesota State Fair, mm -hmm. you can interview Mark Walters. And I'm like, cool. So I went, out, I went out, I did the show with Mark Walters. I actually, I was on the air with you of, of all, you know, strange coincidences. Uh, you were talking about your situation and um, had a great time. And then Mark, uh, Mark called me the next day and he's like, listen, this is a really cool idea. No one's doing this. I want to help you with this. And I'm like, uh, okay, I don't know what this means, but let's go with it. And he called me two days after that. And he's like, do you want to speak at the gun rights policy conference in Tampa? I can put you on the panel of people that use new media to promote gun rights. And I'm like, I will gladly do this. And um, it's, it's been great since then. Well, and that was, if I remember right, your speaking engagement was at the Tampa Gun Rights Policy Conference was your first one. Yep, that was. And that's been, what, four or five years ago. Four or five. And, and boy, you've had some really interesting people, uh, and a lot of them that have, that have jumped in the, in the, in the stagecoach with you. Um, what are some of your most memorable ones for you? Well, so, well the first, I'm going to say the, when I originally had the idea, I was, I was thinking to myself, you know, how can I get, you know, Ted Nugent in the car? And it still hasn't happened, but it's, it's on the list of how cool would that be? Um, one of the people I really wanted to, to get in the car was Masada Yub. And I was, uh, Kevin Sona from Florida, Kerry, asked me if I would come down and speak at one of his Florida Kerry events, the, the camping event that mm -hmm. I, know, I know you've been to. So I said, yeah, I'd, I'd love to. So, you know, we made the plans for that. And then he called me up one day and he's like, Masada Yub is going to be coming. You think you can get him in the car? And I'm like, <clears throat> oh, my God, that would be awesome. So there was, <laughs> I remember there was one day where I said, okay, I, I, I met Masada um, in Tampa and I met him at a, a talk that he was doing up in New Hampshire. And I said, all right, I've got his phone number. I'm going to call him, tell him that we're going to be at this, ask him if he wants to be in the car. And I told myself I was going to do this by 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And at 1 o'clock, I get a phone call from Kevin Sona. And Kevin's like, hey, man, how's it going? I'm like, oh, I thought you were, you know, I thought you were calling to tell me I needed to call Masada you. And, uh, and so he's like, you know, I told myself by 1 o'clock I was going to give him a call. And lo and behold, you call me. He's like, hang up on me, call him right now. I talked to him for maybe two minutes. He's like, oh, yeah, it's, uh, sounds great. It's interesting. Well, I'll see you in a couple of weeks. And I'm like, get off the phone. I'm like, holy crap, I'm sorry you just said he'd be on the show with me. <laughs> right. And it was like, no way, no way. So that, that was a really cool one. And we, we ended up getting lost when we were in Florida. Um, I missed a turn to get us back to the campsite. And, um, I, you know, it was one of these things where I missed the turn and then I turned around and I missed the turn again. And oh, I no. turned around a couple of times. Yeah. I'm like, holy crap, this is not good. So we're, we're just wrapping things up at, at the interview. And, and uh, Masada Yub says, well, this is the first time that an Arab has ever been kidnapped. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's gold, man. <laughs> that is gold. Very cool. So I, you've got... How I mean, you've got a lot of them. How many episodes of Riding Shotgun with Charlie? And you've got some in the can that haven't been released yet. 
I do. I have. Uh, I'm actually after we're done here. I've got to spend the rest of my day editing a show. Uh, it's. I'm editing episode 89, and it is Brian and Shelley Hill from the Complete Combatant, and they are outside of Marietta, Georgia. Mm-hmm. Um, last month, I interviewed Stephen Williford in Greeley, Pennsylvania, and he's got an amazing, amazing story. Um, I've got a couple of other shows that I've got to do, and I've, I think I've got enough shows to get me to the end of 2020. And then I need to start freaking out and saying, okay, what do I need to do? Where do I need to go? How can I get there with all of the pandemic? How am I going to get around? Where can I meet people and and all that sort of fun stuff? Absolutely. So how do you, uh, you're obviously you're not an independently wealthy man, or if you are, you haven't loaned me any money yet, but, uh, <laughs> How do you, you you go to uh, you're in Florida you're in I I I I've, I've seen you in Texas I've seen you in uh in your local area there but you do these all over the country you did one here um, almost a month ago in Alabama um is when you book these is this just somewhere you're going to be and you find somebody interesting in that area there's a little bit of that to it. I had uh, I had some family stuff to do in January, and I called up Rhonda Azell, who I had on the show, and I said, "Hey, listen, I'm I'm going to be in Chicago on on Thursday morning. Who can I get in the car that morning?" And she's like, "Talk to Daniel Easterday." So I messaged Daniel. I'm like, "Look, in 48 hours, I'm going to be at Midway Airport. I'm going to have a rental car." Rhonda said, "I should be able to get you in the car and, and have you on the show." And so. I was able to connect with him. Um, on another trip I made this summer to the Midwest, um, I was I knew I was going through from Massachusetts to uh, to Illinois or outside Chicago, so I contacted um, uh, oh my God Don Hillier from Hiding Hilda, mm-hmm. and I said, Hey, I've got a show. We we met at uh, Dallas at the Gun Rights Policy Conference. Would you like to be on the show? I'm good. This is the day that I'm looking at. Are you available? And she's like, Yeah, sure. And then another trip to the Midwest. Um, I contacted Argo J up in uh, Milwaukee, and I said, "Hey, I'm coming out." You know, so I try to. Um, I don't want to say I don't plan the trips, but I, I see where I'm going, and I say, "Okay, how can I, how can I get an interview with someone wherever I'm going for something?" So last year in 2019 in Phoenix at the Gun Rights Policy Conference, I had like, I filmed nine or ten episodes. When uh, the year before in Chicago, I think I filmed about five episodes. In Dallas, the year before that, I filmed about five or six shows. What I did this summer is I decided that uh, I wanted to try to take the show on the road. So with all of the pandemic and everything, what I ended up doing is I found someone who said they could um, uh, I could crash with them that lives in Nashville. So I'm like, great, Nashville's only 18 hours away, 18 short hours. So I drove down to Nashville. I um, interviewed a couple people in Nashville. I interviewed um, Beth Alcazar. I knew she was in Alabama, so I contacted her. She said she'd be willing to be on the show, and then I contacted um, Mark Walters and Shelley uh, Brian and Shelley Hill, and they're outside mm-hmm. of Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And Shelley's like, "Hey, we can get Claude Werner on the show with you." I'm like, "Oh my God, that's awesome!" And um, so that's that's uh, you know for something like that, I, I I made a plan. I'm like, "Who can I get? Where am I going to be going? How can I make all this happen?" But for some of them, it's, you know, if I have, um, you know, I was going to, um, I was going to try to get to the NRA annual meetings this year that were going to be in Nashville. Right. And I'm like, all right, who's in Nashville? Who can I get down there? So I messaged TikTok 45 and I haven't had him on the show, but um, it's, uh, it's a little bit of where am I going? And if I'm going that direction, who do I know? Who can I find? Who can I reach out to? Well, we're almost out of time for this one today, but before we go, uh, for either the gun grams or riding shotgun with Charlie, and and you certainly, if you're not watching this riding shotgun with Charlie's, you should be. But if somebody wants to to consume some of those, or if uh, they want to get in touch with you, how do they do it? Well, the uh, the gun grams they can find on YouTube if they just look for G U N G R A M. I've got 250 over 250 videos there. The writing shotguns, it's writing shotgun with charlie.com. Uh, the email is writing shotgun with charlie at gmail.com. You can find me on Facebook and on Instagram. I'm trying to get stuff going on on the parlor. And on parlor, it's just RSW Charlie. Um, they can watch the show on YouTube on Gunstreamer. They can also watch it on the Ops Lens app. And they can listen to it in podcast form on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, and on iHeartRadio. 
Very, very cool. Charlie, thank you so much for joining us today, man. Paul, this is my pleasure, man. Anytime. Thank you. All right, we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up, folks. If you wouldn't mind, please subscribe to our videos. And when you do, hit the notification bell so you know when we release another one, which we will be doing tomorrow. Come join us for another Daily Bullet.